In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the digestive system and its major structures and functions. So the GI tract or the alimentary canal, some people call it, has lots of different parts. And basically it's a long tubing system that's used for the, uh, the physical breakdown of food into nutrients. It helps us uh, take in things like vitamins, water, and electrolytes. Also things like carbohydrates, uh, proteins, and, and uh, fats. Now the other thing that the GI tract does is it helps us to eliminate waste from food product by the process of creating feces. Now it has lots of different parts. So these are things like the mouth or a pharynx, the esophagus, stomach, both intestine, the small and large intestine, and also the anus. There are also some glands associated with the GI tract called the ancillary glands. And what they help to do is break, uh, break down food with uh, like, especially in chemical processes. And we'll get to that in just a second. But these are glands like the salivary glands, the pancreas and the liver. Now, starting at the mouth, this is where physical breakdown of food occurs. And it, and it happens through this process called mastication, which is chewing. Now, the breakdown of food happens with two ways. It happens with a physical breakdown of food and the chemical breakdown of food. Now, the salivary glands help the chemical process of food. And starting here, this is where amylase is released, and it's a, an enzyme that's used to break down starches. Once amylase actually reaches the stomach, it's actually deactivated. Now, there's another process we need to look at here called deglutition, and deglutition is the process of swallowing. Now, what happens is as we chew in food, we have to move it from the mouth into the oropharynx so that it can actually get to the esophagus. Now, what happens is there's skeletal muscle contraction, and it literally rolls the food, the bolus of food from the oropharynx um, with the tongue, and that bolus is pushed to the esophagus. And what's going to happen here is it's actually going to enter the stomach, which we're going to talk about next. But it enters this process by peristalsis. And peristalsis is the rhythmic um, contraction of smooth muscle that propels food down the GI tract. As food moves from the esophagus into the stomach, what's going to happen is this is where more of the chemical breakdown of food is going to occur. And the reason this happens is, is because the glands in the stomach secrete these gastric juices, in particular two of them, which are hydrochloric acid and pepsinogen, which is converted to pepsin. And what happens is the hydrochloric acid actually keeps the pH in the stomach really low from about 1.5 to 2.5. And the reason it does that is because it helps to kill bacteria in the food to help us from getting food poisoning. Now, I talked about pepsin and hydrochloric acid. These are digesting protein. Um, these are digestive enzymes that help to break down proteins by converting them into proteoses and peptones. These are just longer chain polypeptides. Now, in infants, there's an enzyme called renin, and it helps to curdle the milk in the stomach. And the reason it does that, it helps to um, improve um, absorption. And it's also longer lasting, so babies will feel more satiated, so they're hungry all the time, even though they are really hungry all the time because they're babies. But um, that's what the purpose of renin does. It actually helps to fill them a little bit more satiated than if they were just to take in um, some some other liquid form of food. Now, muscular contractions in the stomach help to mix and churn food. And what's gonna happen is this chemical plus that um, that physical of the uh, churning of food and the mixing of that food is gonna create this, um, this bolus of food called chyme. And what happens is once the chyme is in here and it's gonna move into the small intestine, it's going to do it by uh, contracting and push it through this pyloric sphincter. There are two sphincters here. There's one, which is the, uh, the pyloric sphincter, and then there's a cardiac sphincter. If you check out the uh, lesson on the stomach, or I go into that in more detail, but uh, for the purposes here, just know that it's gonna pass through that pyloric sphincter and it's gonna go into the duodenum. Now that the food's in the small intestine, this is where the majority of digestion occurs. So there's uh, digestion and there's also the process of absorption. And what happens with absorption is uh, this is going to be the conversion of complex macronutrients into fats, uh, from fats to fatty acids, proteins into peptides, and then amino acids, and then finally carbohydrates into monosaccharides. Now the thing about this here is that the pancreas is actually going to help to release, pancreas sits right in here, it's going to help to release um, enzymes into the digestive tract. And part of that is that it's going to be, um, these are inactive enzymes and that's going to, they're going to be inactive, but once they hit the small intestine, they're actually going to be activated. Now, muscular movements here, you've got some physical, um, contributions to the physical digestion here, which is, uh, you've got chemical, uh, segmental contractions with help to mix food. And then there are also, uh, the peristalsis, which is that rhythmic, uh, contraction that moves food down the GI tract. Now, in the small intestine, absorption is really important because this is where 10 to 20% of that food is absorbed as monosaccharides, fatty acids, and glycerol. 
Now, the other 80% is synthesized into triglycerides and absorbed through these things called lacteals in the small intestine. They're these little uh, ridges, and, and there's an actual um, uh, lymph uh, structure in here that has some capillaries involved, and that helps to get things to the liver via the portal system. But go check out go check out the small intestine lesson and also the lesson on uh, the liver for more information on those. Now, once food gets into the small intestine, this is where the remaining unabsorbed food is going to be expelled from the body. Now, this is a major majority of it is bacteria and cellulose, but what happens are the are these segmental contractions, uh, which uh, these are each called haustrum. And there's more information on this on the large intestine lesson, but each haustrum will fill and it'll propel food this way and it keeps moving. Now, what happens is you have, like I said, you have these segmental contractions and the peristalsis to move that bolus out of the body. Now, in the ascending colon, this is where the majority of absorption of water, vitamin B complex, vitamin K, and, and sodium chloride occurs. Now, as the process ends, this is where we eliminate waste from our body through the process of defecation. There, inside the um, inside the rectum, there are these uh, there are these stretch receptors, and what happens is is as um, food comes in or the bolus comes in, uh, it's going to stretch. And as the stretch as it stretches, the stretch receptors are going to be initiated, and there's going to be a signal to the ba uh, to the brain that the food needs to move or the remaining food and waste needs to be removed out of the body. Now this is going to happen uh, with, there's an involuntary um, uh, muscle called the uh, anal sphincter, the internal anal sphincter. And what happens is that's going to relax and the food is going to move out and uh, then go, then be excreted from the want, uh, from the body. And so, and by the process of peristalsis. Well, let's recap. The major functions of the GI tract are the chemical physical breakdown of food into the nutrients and vitamins. And this starts in the mouth through the process of mastication, which is chewing, and that's that physical breakdown of food. In the stomach, you're going to have both chemical and physical mixing of food. It's extremely acidic. Remember, it's 1.5 to 2.5 pH. And in the small intestine, this is where the majority of digestion happens, as well as absorption through those lacteals. Now, in the large intestine, this is where the absorption of water, vitamin B, K, and sodium chloride occur, and it's also where the body eliminates waste. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, Happy nursing.